Just recently, the Tesla app for iOS devices had a big upgrade to version 4.0.0. An Android version will probably be out by the time this video is released. As a reminder of the previous version of the Tesla app, I'll bring it up on my iPhone XR and do a quick overview. Then I will update and you will see the difference between the two versions. Here is the main screen showing the battery percentage and status on top and a few buttons below the car. The main submenus of climate, controls, charging, location, upgrades and service are below. I'll show each one of these as you can see now with a brief look. The phone key. Climate. Controls. Charging. Location. The available upgrades that you can buy or subscribe. Scheduling service. And roadside assistance. Pressing the gear icon in the upper left brings up the settings menu. Here is your message inbox, loot box for referrals, account info, notifications, and the ability to use Face ID and Calendar Sync. And that's it for the previous app for iOS. Now let's see the new version. Normally apps will update themselves over time, but if you want to do an immediate update, go into the App Store. Press the round icon in the upper right side. Find the Tesla icon down below. Mine is already updated, but you can see examples like this Duke Energy app. Press the update button to download the new version. If I scroll down, I can see the updated Tesla app. Click on More to show the details of this update. This list shows important changes such as the refreshed vehicle and energy homepage, streamlined summon experience, enhanced phone key support, vehicle no longer needs to be selected, send commands to vehicle immediately upon opening app, Use Go Off Grid to seamlessly disconnect your home from the grid with Powerwall. Shop the Tesla catalog and view and manage your orders. Also, view supercharging history and the ability to pay outstanding charges. Here are some screenshots and also a list of what the app can do. Now let's open the app. The first thing I notice is that the car is presented with a slightly different angle. The car name and battery level is on the top left. Below the car, we have four controls for locking, HVAC, charging, and opening the frunk. The list below is slightly different now. They have reordered with controls on top, then climate, charging is gone, and part of the middle icon group. Location is next, Security now gets its own heading. Then we have upgrades, service, and roadside. On the top right is a user icon instead of the loot box. The settings icon also gets moved inside this user icon. Let's press this and see what's inside. If you press on the Tesla car button, it will go back to the main menu. The next button on the screen is the Tesla shop. Here you can buy charging equipment, vehicle accessories, apparel, and other lifestyle purchases. Clicking on the inbox shows all the messages to and from Tesla. The loot box gives you information on your referral link and any past referrals. Clicking on the account will now let you update the contact information, view your order history, in the charging menu, you can update your credit card payment information. This is a new ability that will come in handy if you're stuck at a charging station with an outdated credit card. And the history will show all of your supercharging sessions and the older ones are grouped by year. And now for settings. You have calendar sync, which you can view your phone's calendar in the car. In notifications, you can adjust how the app alerts you. One big change is that the app can automatically select your car if you have more than one Tesla. Security alarm function. Charging notifications can be set. I only use charging interrupted. And as noted here, at a supercharger, it overrides these settings. Lastly, another new option is to have the app alert you when there is a new system software update that is available for the car. 
Before I forget, at the top of the screen is a profile circle that you can customize with a photo if you prefer. Press the button and select a photo to crop, and then press choose. And that's about it for this submenu. Back at the main menu, press controls. This overhead view of the car has buttons to open the frunk and trunk. The middle lock button can unlock and lock the car. Pressing the charge icon will open the charge port. On the bottom are a row of buttons for flashlights, honk horn, start, and home link. Pressing climate brings up the HVAC menu. There are buttons for the defrost, the seat heaters in the front and rear row. New on the bottom is the interior and exterior temperatures. And on the bottom row, there is the on and off button, temperature set, and cracking open the windows to vent. Next up is location. It first defaults to map mode, but you can switch it to satellite if you prefer. If you zoom out, you will be able to find superchargers in your area. The new security menu is up next. It includes turning on or off sentry mode, valet mode, and also the speed limit mode. Now we have upgrades. The first option shows the software upgrades available. You can purchase, in my case, full self-driving mode or subscribe to full self-driving capability. The accessories button brings you to the uh, same Tesla store that we saw earlier. Pressing manage brings up purchased options and subscriptions. Now we have the service menu. The top button allows you to schedule service. Here are a bunch of different service options and you can click on those. You also have access to the history of all your mobile service and service center appointments. Clicking on video guides, this shows a number of videos that Tesla has created to do a number of different things with the car. And lastly, we have roadside assistance. Choose from any number of things that happen to the car that cause you to be stuck on the side of the road. And hopefully the contracted provider can get to you as soon as possible. If your car happens to be charging, the main screen shows this by default. It also displays the charging limits so that you can adjust them if necessary, anywhere from 50% to 100%. Honestly, I never used the iOS widget in the previous version of this app. Here I'll add it to my scrolling widget on the top of the phone. Hold down any of the icons on the screen to put it into menu edit mode. Press the plus button to add the widget to the screen. There are two different sizes of the widget to choose from. I picked the larger version. Now grab it and place it on top of the existing scrolling widget. And now it's part of it. Press the done button to finish. Unfortunately, the buttons on the previous widget are now gone. If you press the widget, it goes straight into the app. I think this has something to do with iOS 14. And that wraps it up for my introduction to the iOS Tesla app version 4.0.0. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.